Hello future Argenti Banes, he is the man that will revitalize the Euro Edition category and he will become the best Euro Edition character in the game. He will dethrone the king upon the top. I am so sorry Jing Yuan that you're getting knocked down the tier list even more after Argenti comes out, but it's okay bud. E4 QQ is better than you anyways. You're just going down from number two to number three. Not You're not you're not the first loser anymore. But anyways guys, today's video we're going to be going over everything you're going to need for Argenti before pulling him. So we'll be going over everything from what his kit does to what material materials you're gonna need, what relics you're gonna need to be farming for, what light cones you need to be leveling up, and everything in between, best synergies and everything like that. And I even have a sussy little theory or idea that we could use for him at the end of the video. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop into what he actually does now. So let's go ahead and talk about the skill first. It's very lackluster. He just uses his skill and attacks all enemies. He does the same thing as Jing Yuan does. But this is going to play directly into the talent because what the talent's going to be doing is every time you use an ultimate, basic, or skill, you'll be regaining three extra energy for every single enemy you hit. On top of this, you'll also be increasing Argenti's crit rate by 1%. This can get up to 10 stacks, and this doesn't leave, it doesn't look like. So that's gonna be very cool there. So a permanent 10% uptime on his crit rate. And why is the increased crit rate in this energy region really good? Because of his ultimate, because he doesn't have one ult. No, he has two ults. One costs lower energy, one costs a higher energy amount. The lower energy one is going to cost pretty low energy and is going to be hitting all enemies. And it'll also be having a lower multiplier than the one of the higher energy variant. Now that higher energy ultimate is also going to be hitting all enemies. It has a higher multiplier and it hits six extra times to random enemies. So it works the same way as Sampo or Asta work where they have all these hits, but they're all divided up to random targets. But if you have one target, they're all going to hit that one target. So this does make him have the highest damage multiplier in the game for his ultimate. So his ultimate should be hitting some crazy damage especially against single target opponents but his kit is pretty overall straightforward and basic there's nothing else we really have to talk about with this you mainly just skill 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 wait till you get the higher ult and then use the ult that's all we really have to say about that but with that being said let's go ahead and talk about all the materials you're gonna need to build your argenti now so my boy argenti here the man the myth the legend the beauty is gonna need 3.9 million credits on top of this guys he's gonna be needing 290 of the purple xp book so you better get to farming these now if you already pull for Hua or if you plan on leveling up Hanya because it's going to be an expensive update for you. Let me tell you that. Uh, but as far as the boss materials go, just farm the same old boss we've been farming for the last three patches, the Fantilia boss. Because it doesn't seem like they want to give us any more bosses to farm. So yep, Fantilia boss, get 12 boss materials, you're good to go there. Now, as far as his level ascension materials, you're going to need 65 of his new level ascension materials. You can get this by fighting the new boss in the game from the new area. So yeah, get the farming on those now so you can have them before he actually comes out now talking about his trace materials for his class trace materials you're gonna need 139 of the big keys 69 of the medium keys and 18 of the small keys these are all gonna be from the erudition calyx so go ahead and get the farming those up this is for max level traces by the way as well just want to give you guys a heads up on that now, as far as like the smaller trace materials go, you're going to need 73 of the big void cores, 71 of the medium void cores, and 71 of the small void cores. But let's say you're not only going for this, but you're going for his light cone as well. Let's talk about the mats you're going to need for that. So, you're going to need 890,000 credits for this, 166 of the level up materials here. As far as like the actual trace materials go, you're going to need 15 big keys, 12 medium keys, and 4 small keys. For the small trace materials, or the easy to get ones you're gonna need 14 of the big void things 20 of the medium void things and 20 of the small void things and on screen now is gonna be a chart of everything that he needs this covers everything he needs for his signature light cone as well as his own trace materials this is the max materials you're gonna need so if you already have these amounts you're going to be set and good to go for Argenti already. This is counting in, maxing out all of his traces. That includes basic attack as well. So uh, just keep that in mind when building here. You're going to need a little bit less than this overall, but this is the maximum amount you're going to need. So if you're close to these amounts, you should be pretty good to go there. Now let's go ahead and talk about these light cones here because it might seem like there's not very many good light cones for them. And that might be the case, but I think just about almost every light cone in here can work for him. So we're going to go ahead and talk about his best in slots now. Obviously, his best in slot light cone is going to be his signature light cone. Cannot talk about what it does yet. Just know it's going to be his best in slot as it is for most 5-star characters to come out. If you want his second best in slot, it's actually a 4-star light cone. And that's going to be today is another peaceful day. That is going to be the battle pass light cone. This is going to be really good because it's very, very similar to the ult in a lot of ways. And also, uh, considering what his maximum energy cost is, 
this this is definitely going to reach its cap. Let's just say that. And you're going to be getting maximum amount of damage out from this light cone here. So at an S1, you're getting a 32% damage increase. And in an S5, you're getting a 64% damage increase. This applies to everything. Not just their ultimates. This applies to all of his attacks. So this is going to be super, super good for him. If you have the battle pass, then I would recommend getting this. But let's say you don't have the battle pass. What's his best free play option? And that's just going to be the Sears and the Breakfast. Because you can get this to S5 pretty easily. It's a bog standard 24% damage increase. It's also going to be increasing his attack whenever you defeat enemies. So uh, he does AoE attacks anyway. So you'll probably be defeating enemies with him fairly often because he's the main damage dealer of course but yeah this is going to be the best free to play option for him now some other options you might be able to run on him uh, make the world clamor because most of his damage is going to be coming from his ultimate so at an s5 if you could get this s5 it would be a 64 percent damage increase here at an s1 is 32 percent increase ultimate damage so this could also work out in his favor as well and another option that i want to see tried or i want to try myself when i actually get argenti is actually pass key argenti because this is going to be helping him get his energy back up this is going to be giving him 12 energy uh, whenever he uses a skill at s5 so i want to try pass key out i don't know how much damage you'll lose on this but I do want to give a try to Passkey because it works really good for Serval and considering that's where most of her damage comes from and the same thing can be said for Argenti. I think that Passkey could honestly be a really good option for him. You just have to see what the damage drop off is. But that's really all I have to say about Light Cones now and now let's go ahead and talk about the portion you guys have probably all been waiting for. But first, a word from our sponsor. Guys, we don't have a sponsor. Please just subscribe. This is this is what the spots for. Just subscribe to the channel. I don't have a sponsor. Please subscribe. And now let's go ahead and talk about those relics you guys want to hear about. Now, guys, I know the sweaty option here is going to be a four-piece quantum set. You get a 10% defense shred. This is going to be his best in slot in most case scenarios, especially against quantum enemies where you get the extra 10% defense shred. Which, fortunately for you, on screen now are some enemies that are weak. To both quantum and physical so you could take use of this full ability with all of these bosses here on screen now uh, now the higher boss mobs like the actual boss mobs not the elites uh, none of those have the weakness that you want but you can get 20% off on these bosses here now if we're getting a little less sweaty here and talking about a more generalized set you could run and that's going to be the four piece champion of the streetwise boxing it gives you an increased physical damage bonus as well as an increased attack buff as well this could be super super good to run I mean this this is a pretty good general overall set for him to run right i mean this is you put the physical set on physical character not that hard guys come on easy clap another set i do want to bring up is just running two piece speed i mean if you're having trouble reaching th speed thresholds and if you're having trouble reaching the speed that you need for the planner sets we're going to talk about here then running a two piece speed set could actually help him out a lot just keep that in mind when building if you're missing out on some speed here this will definitely help him out to get that extra speed now let's go ahead and talk about his best planner sets right now now his best in slot planner set is going to be the glamis set the reason i say the glamis set here is because it gives an 18 percent damage bonus if you're able to get over 160 speed or higher so this is going to be the best case scenario for him or the best overall in slot for him just because of the extra overall damage it gives him as far as salsado goes i think it might be a little bit easier to run salsado on him because of the 50 percent crit rate requirement it gives a 15 percent ultimate damage increase but if you're able to reach 160 speed with him, I would definitely recommend running the Glamis set. This means you can even run him on a team with Asta because you want him to be as fast as possible if you're running the Glamis set. This is going to be the best in slot. Second best in slot here is going to be the Salsado set. So just keep that in mind when using your builds. Whatever you can get the most of, the easiest with your builds you currently have, then that is going to be what you actually want to run on him. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about some of the main and subsets you're going to need for him. And then after that, we're going to talk about what his best team are so as far as the boots go i would run speed boots here i just think getting the 160 speed to actually reach that requirement for glamoth is going to be absolutely essential for him obviously you can also run attack percent here as well if you don't want to go that route now as far as the chest plate go i would just recommend running crit damage here you only get 10 percent crit rate from the actual kit itself so it really depends on what your crit ratios are looking like or if you do plan on running the south auto set you want to get at least 50 percent crit right there for that so this is going to change depending on what your crit ratio looks like next is going to be your rope now i'm going to throw out a wacky wild answer here and say run energy region rope just because of the fact his ultimate cost is so high this might help you out as far as getting his ultimate back up but like just really really quick right also another alternative would be attack percentage here as well uh because you know if you're running speed boots then you're probably going to be missing out on a lot of attack so 
this could definitely be good for you if you want to run attack percent here. It's really going to be up to you. I'm personally going to run energy regen rope and test that out first, but go attack percentage. That's probably the safer route to go anyways. Now, as far as the sphere goes, just run physical damage on the sphere. I think that's really the only thing you'd want to run here. Uh, but hopping into the subsets now, obviously the number one subset you'll be focusing on is either speed or crit rate. Uh, then after that will be crit damage and attack percentage. So the reason I say crit rate and speed is because if you are running South Salter, you do want to reach that 50% crit rate requirement. And if you're not, then obviously you want your crit ratios to be fine anyway, still. But other than that, speed. Speed, if you're running speed boots, you're still going to need 32 speed to actually get him up to that 160 threshold. But yeah, these are the subsets you want to be running. And let's go ahead and talk about now what his best teams are going to be or what are his best teammates. Who are the team players he's playing with here? Number one going to be Ting Kuhn or Hua Hua. The reason I say Ting Yun at number one here is because he has a huge cost for his ultimate. And Ting Yun will definitely help out on the journey to get that. She also does provide a speed boost if you have her at E2. So just overall really, really good there. Helps out with the speed of getting that Glamis set all the way activated. Uh, next is going to be Asta. Asta does provide speed as well. Uh, that's really the main thing I can say there. She also helps out with attack percentage too. And then while we're still on the topic of like harmony characters, Hanya is also going to be really good for him. Helps get skill points back, but that's not the main thing. The main thing here is the speed she provides or can provide to him and the huge attack bonus she's going to be providing to him as well. I think you want to be stacking that attack up as much as possible because of how high that multiplier is going to be for his ultimate. Now, another option that's a little bit sussy here that I told you we're going to talk about at the end of the video. I think if you have Kafka with her light cone, you could actually run the dot set on him and get pretty good return, like a, a super, super good return. And I think it'd be worth it running that dot set if you have Kafka with her light cone. If you're able to proc two dots off on the enemy, I think that could be a really clutch option you can run. And that's because of the fact out of four pieces of the dot set, you're going to be reducing that enemy's defense or defense shredding them by 6% per dot up to three dots. So at two dots, you're doing a 12% defense shred, which could be better for you and more beneficial to you against enemies that are weak to just physical and not quantum this is going to be giving you a higher buff on top of that you're getting an attack increase as well so that is something i want to bring up there we'll do testing on this and i do want to actually try out the dot set on argenti because i want to use him with my kafka honestly so we're going to see how that works out anyways guys that's going to be all for today's video if you enjoyed everything you saw today please hit that subscribe button and maybe the beautiful man will bless you in your summon so anyways guys Hope to see you in the next one, and yeah, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.